So if you have some crazy cows, it's crazy cows. There's still something good now. I'm going to look at later. And AWS Dev Day is happening tomorrow. That's interesting. Um, my name is Tim. Tim Malik. I uh, work at Magicraft uh, with uh, Josh Wolf. Teach kids how to code in, Magic, uh, in Minecraft. I'm not going to talk about that today because we've talked about it quite a few times here. I'm going to start just by sharing something kind of cool that I've been work, uh, just playing around with. I'm not doing anything too serious with it, but um, this is Google spreadsheet uh, package on NPM, which is pretty cool because it means you can use, a, use it as your database. <laughs> like, really. <laughs> this is about QL. It's probably pretty tiny there. But this is actually... Um, this is a GraphQL um, server, which is actually getting its data from that spreadsheet. So if you go in here, we have Snowball, Gregory, and Numpy Bunk pin. We had another one here. I'm just making these ideas up. Call Fred. Uh, he's a Giant blob. Uh, this will make more sense a bit later. Just give them some stats. We just call this uh, string. So now if I query that, oh my god, I have Fred here from the Google spreadsheet. So you can do that really um, cheaply actually um, in code. Get a new monster. For the monsters, I'm actually just running this. Uh, Can you close the TS link output? Hey? Can you close the TS link output down the bottom? Uh, down here? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> that makes more sense. Uh, so I'm just getting this Google spreadsheet right. Basically, that's the code. I won't go into detail what it's doing, but it's just uh, loads of sheets. You just put your sheet ID in there. Uh, you have to do a few things. You have to like publish your Google spreadsheet. Like in here, you uh, you create a shareable link, as you're probably used to doing. We also need to go in here and um, publish the web. You just publish it as a web page. Then it makes it publicly available for your database, which is pretty cool. And then the even cooler thing is that if you actually um, set it up with API keys, you can do updates. So I have a little mutation here. Um, I change uh, changes the tag value to 100, so it's ridiculous the overpower. If I run that, can we see in here? That was changed to 100. Change it back to prove that that's actually what happened. So that's um that's pretty cool. You can you can do cool stuff with that. You can you can stand up like a static website and have like its own database without having to host the database anywhere. You can also do that with um I did some cool stuff with GitHub as well where uh, in this like I have a URL and I just write some code that if the URL is pointing at like a uh, static file, like an MD file, you can actually serve your blog post for that. So like, you'd have a combination of like uh, GitHub and Google Docs to create like a pretty powerful database. So anyway, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I'm actually really late for a uh, um, event we've got coming up, which I'm going to do a shameless pitch for. It's probably not relevant to most of you guys, but um, anyone, you might know of somebody. So that's Google Sheets with Node.js. It's starting a little operation called Open Sorcery. It's kind of in connection with uh, uh, Magic Craft. It's teaching coding, but for adults. Um, we're going to do an event coming up on the 16th of September. If you're not already like massively put off, we are actually because of the fact that Facebook might see you, possibly, maybe, probably not. Um, anyway, if you know anybody who's interested to learn with these technologies, React, Redux, and then Apollo, GraphQL. We have an event 
uh, 16th of September said just digital people. It's going to be uh, about $40, which is pretty reasonable for a, a software development workshop. Um, and what, yeah, that's a just digital people. It's going to be with Ben O'Neill, who's not here, and Josh Wolf, who's not here tonight, and me, or is here. Um, that's going to level the workshop. Of course, because it's pretty much. What we're going to do is build this um, a Monster Battler app. So we're going to start, actually, this is, check, check out this, this is Ben built this today. Let's set this up. Oh, yeah. Cool. It's tiny. There we go. So he just built this this afternoon in React, so that's pretty cool. You can select two monsters and then basically make them fight. That's as far as it goes at the moment. So we're going to start off with, um, we put that in, uh, in React. Then you put the battle engine in Redux, and then I'm going to swap that out for like um, GraphQL. It's going to be GraphQL client side only. I've already built that server in uh, TypeScript. It's an express server. Uh, and then you can update too, so you push, get the monsters from there, and you push the battle events from there as well. Um, I think that's all my slides, yeah. So, that's it. Questions? With their spreadsheets, and then you put the GraphQL, what that is that? GraphQL, your part of it? Yeah, I made that. Super simple, though. I'll show you. This card is actually on GitHub. Um, if you're interested in our GitHub, it's, uh, it's a very new thing we're just starting. Open source Open source TV. I bought the domain open source TV. Um, so it's here uh, Apollo server code. Uh, um, oh, I didn't push it there. I didn't push it. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, um, like, it's really easy to stand up a GraphQL server. Like, if you wanted to experiment, you're wondering what GraphQL is, and you've got, like, half an hour, an hour, go to the examples. I'm using Apollo server, it just came out recently. Um, this is, like, the main server. You define two routes, Graph, GraphQL and Graphical. A Graphical is this thing. You have like a, a, a query UI, which is really cool for testing stuff. Then you define a schema. I've got my schema here with my monster, my battle, my turn. I've got a query to get the monsters, the battles, and the turns. I've got mutations, which are like create, update, and delete events. Uh, and, delete events. Uh, and that's it for that. And then you define resolvers, which resolve is I'm using another cool technology I just discovered today called LoDB. It uses Lodash to create like a local JSON database, which just writes to just writes to a file, which is pretty cool for, for quickly testing stuff, like spinning up a backend without actually having to have it on a separate server. Yeah. But I still write the yeah, I just use that code, you read it, you read in the sheet, you read the rows, and then you just basically do update the row values. The cool thing about that um, Google spreadsheets thing is that she pulls the um, rows in. And it creates a, uh, an object with properties for each of these. So you've just got like row.id, row.name, row.health, row.attack. Um, and then you just like update your values if you want to, and then just call row.save function. Do you know what the size limit is for the spreadsheet? 400,000 cells. There you go, 400,000 cells. I wouldn't use it for anything like that you need performance on. Can you notice here it's actually like a bit slow? So like if I, uh, if I change this back to 100 and run that, and then we go here and say, <laughs> yeah, takes a little bit to do it. But it's cool for just playing around with, and especially public data, then you just only need read access on it. It's quite a good solution actually, because then you click caching layer on it, and then just like, um, I don't know, we, we, we pull it every 10 seconds or whatever. Any other questions about that? Tim Mowry, ladies and gentlemen.